Hello guys, welcome to the game of Flight Photoshop of Vlogs published by Comviewers. I'm Zephyrus from the Asia server. This video will be about my new tier list and ranking for net 5 heroes in Arena or the Team Arena. This new version is the tier list and ranking for the Transcendence Era. In my previous version of tier list and ranking for the net 5, I did not include the effect of transcendence. So, for the tier list and ranking that I'm going to show you guys today is taking account the effect of transcendence into comparison of all the net 5 heroes that we have currently, a total number of 26. This time, I have categorized the tier list of net 5 heroes into 5 tiers. Tier S, Tier A, Tier B, Tier C, and Tier D. In my previous version of tier list, I have only categorized them into 4 tier, which is Tier S, A, B, and C. Currently, I have added another tier, which is the last tier, Tier D. So, let me explain a little bit about each tier before I move on to show you guys the ranking of the net 5 heroes in the arena or team arena. Firstly, tier D. For tier D, you won't see them in arena much. They are not useful. Sadly, they are not useful. For tier C, those heroes are still used in arena but very rare. You will rarely see them in the arena because they are lacking of something important. They are lacking of something important in arena. For tier B, they have very good skill set. They have powerful skill set, especially when reading them. However, their powerful skill set doesn't doesn't fit very well in the current meta. They have powerful skill set, they have great skill set, but we don't have a chance to actually put their good skill set into use. Tier A For Tier A heroes, they fit in the current meta very well. And finally, the highest tier which is a Tier S. For Tier S heroes, they fit in the current meta perfectly and there are rarely any other heroes that can actually replace them. If there are any heroes that can be a substitute to the heroes in tier S, they can replace them or they can substitute them but they can't perform as well as the heroes in tier S. Please take note that I am actually ranking the heroes based on a lot of criteria. I am not ranking them based on their 1 vs 1 battle. For example, I am not ranking Lizzie and Atmos based on when you take a Lizzie fighting with Atmos alone, 1 vs 1, and see who stands at the end. I am not ranking them in such a way. Definitely you guys will find that some other heroes at a higher rank may lose to some heroes at a lower rank if you are placing them in a 1 vs 1 fight. So the way I am ranking the heroes is actually based on a lot of aspect and criteria in the arena or team arena. Especially their active skills, their auto skill, their passive skill, their ability to interrupt, their supporting skill to the party, and the most important one is their skill activation sequence. And of course, taking account the transcended passive skill as well. So without wasting more time, let us move on to the ranking and the tier list of each hero. So this time around I will go through each hero in a swift manner and straight to the point because in my previous version of tier list I have actually elaborated why I place them in such a way. So this time I will just go through it very fast and straight to the point on why I place those heroes in the rank 
or the tears. Tier D, rank 26, the last rank goes to Cory, token of Union Cory. Active skill is not really good for Arena. One target on the first auto, one target on the second auto with not that good debuff. Passive is alright, and her passive is quite good yeah her passive is actually quite good for herself to increase her attack power just that in the transcendence era she actually drops a little bit in her rank to her last place because she is hitting one target a lot and even her active skill is not doing anything else rather than plain damage her leader is only for red. Tier D rank 25 goes to Emily. Her active is quite good, freezes nearby enemies, but it's still a random enemy. Random enemy and the nearby. First auto, one target. Second auto, one target. Passive push the enemy with 30% chance and increase her HP. So she is like a slightly better version than Cory than her sister Cory. But in the transcendence era, she is still not putting a very good skill or not putting her own skills into very good use for the transcendence era. Her leader is increased energy by 10% in the PvP. So overall, she is slightly better than her little sister Cory, but is still lacking a lot compared to other net 5 in this transcendence era. Tier D rank 24, Arkan, Light of Power Arkan. Well, his only usefulness is his first auto skill. His first auto skill actually have a chance to interrupt your opponent's tanker, especially Zama. Prevent the Zama from opening his buff. Well, at most it's another story because of her RNG, yeah, her RNG passive. However, his only useful skill currently is being not very useful due to the effect of warrior set the effect of warrior rune set which is being buffed previously warrior rune set is having 30% in ability effect resistant however currently the warrior rune set is having like 50% in ability effect resistant and with the second awakening of tanker that is power up to maximum can go to 35% so totally a frontline tanker is having 85% in ability effect resistance. So which means that Arkan only has a 15% chance to actually stun or interrupt the tanker, the enemy tanker at the front. Well I haven't counted the evasion yet. So his only useful skill is being countered very badly. So that's why Arkan is still his rank is still very terrible. His active is doing too little for an active skill. Too little. His second auto is too redundant. This one is like additional bonus. Passive increase HP by defense is still a bonus stat. His leader bleed. So, not useful leader skill at all. Next tier, tier C. Tier C rank 23 goes to Sally.
active, random enemy and nearby enemy doing debuff, first auto, highest attack power enemy and the nearby enemy, and blind, and then 4 random enemy for the second auto. So her skills, her, act, her attack skill, her active skill, and her auto skill is actually very good in doing debuff. And she actually hits more enemies compared to her other two sisters. Poison effect for the passive and attack speed increase. So a bonus passive stats to her. Leader skill is not relevant for the arena. So overall she is still lacking compared to other net 5 but she is better than her two other sisters due to due to Sally being able to hit more targets and doing better debuff. Tier C rank 22 goes to Nia, the goddess of pain Nia, but she is not painful at all. So the active painless death, 330% 3, 3, magic damage to all enemy and petrify and then poison. Wow, very powerful. However, she takes like forever to actually launch her active skill. She needs to go through a slow motion animation effect in order to launch her active skill. So it's like whenever you click Nia's active or whenever you activate Nia's active, you are actually asking your enemy to interrupt her instantly. Yeah, the goddess of interrupt. Sorry, it should be the goddess of getting interrupted. First auto, 3 enemies and debuff defense. Second auto, 3 enemies and debuff magical defense. Passive anti effect. Most likely, we'll be anti the tanker, which is like not really good, not really useful. And 10% vampiric effect is like too low to be actually useful. So overall, a goddess, a goddess of pain is being ranked very low. A goddess. TLC rank 21, Sherat, God of Shadows, Sherat. Wow. Active skill, 300% physical damage to all enemies and silence them for 5 seconds. Looks like very powerful but similar to Nia, he takes like forever to activate his active. So whenever you see a Shuran activating his active, he is just asking you to quickly interrupt him. Faster click your Kao, faster click your Lizzy, or faster click your Glen, faster click your Serena, or faster click your Atmos. And just interrupt him. So yeah, the god of asking for interruption. First auto to all enemies is okay. Second auto not useful at all. One target at the front, most likely is a tanker. Gain evasion with 20% chance whenever he attack. In the current meta is not useful at all. Decrease attack power of all enemies by 8%. It is too little. Attack power increased by 6% for each ally. This one is okay. TLC rank 20. Phoenix. Burning Judge. Phoenix. So, a hero named after the legendary bird Phoenix. But I don't think he performed similar to the legendary bird. Active skill is like not useful. First auto could be a little bit useful to inflict the debuff. Second auto not useful. And it's like if I have a divine in the team or if I have any other shielder in the team, I will just say please don't activate your second auto. You will just override the better debuff from Divana or Atmos. So the reason why he is not at the last rank or not at the last tier is because of his first passive, the Provoke. This Provoke could actually give some threat or give some annoyance to your enemy. 
second passive is just fine. Leader skill is not relevant for arena content. Tier C rank 19, Patricia. Likes Elite Patricia. Active. Huge magic damage and increased skill cooldown time by one turn. It's fine. So 270% magic damage and decreased attack speed and acquired energy to all enemies. So this skill is actually landing a good debuff. Second auto. 340% to enemy with highest magic power, silence target and acquire 30 energy. So the disappointment here is because she is just hitting one enemy. However, the gain of 30 energy is actually good for the team, but the energy gain is on the second auto, so it might be a little bit too slow. Her passive, decrease skill cooldown time by one turn with 25% chance. Not really that good, in my opinion. Increase magic power, this passive is good. And her leader skill is not really good. TLC rank 18, Tia. He's active, install bomb, and having 290% magic damage to all enemies. So his active is only doing damage. First auto, 3 enemies, decrease the attack speed and energy amount, 270% damage. 3 enemies compared to Patricia, Patricia is dealing damage to all enemies. So. Patricia first auto is actually better than Tia, but Tia is actually using his first auto after one basic attack or after one normal attack, which means that Tia is actually faster. Second auto, three enemies, 270% magic damage and burn. So this one is like just a damaging skill. So his passive is what makes him more special than Patricia because of the freeze effect. So with a 25% chance, he could actually freeze the target. Energy acquired, acquired amount is increased by 20%. Just okay. Dragon's Wing. The leader skill is less useful. Tier C rank 17, Valrox, God of Justice, Valrox. His active skill is good in doing damage and interruption. However, is a little bit too slow, similar to Shorat and Nia, just that he is a little bit faster, but he is still easy to get interrupted. So it's like whenever he activates his active, so he's like asking his enemy to interrupt him. First auto, doing damage to the enemy furthest away and pulls the enemy to the front, only one enemy, and doing nothing else, which is, which is actually quite lacking. 270% physical damage to 3 enemies and burns them, so this one is just a damaging skill. He's passive, so what makes Valrog better than the other two gods, which is the Nia and Shurad, is because of this passive. With each attack, he can stun the enemy for 2 seconds with 30% chance. His second passive is good as well because he can increase his attack power from his defense. He 
his leader skill is not really that useful. Tier C, rank 16, Karen. Two hundred eighty percent damage before hits to all enemies, and inflict seven percent of Karen's max HP as bonus damage. Stun them for two seconds with thirty percent chance. I believe it's per hit. So a good interruption active, but it's not the first to activate. First auto deals two hundred fifty percent physical damage to lowest physical defense enemy and three enemies nearby and pull them to the front wow it's like an upgraded skill of fell roots second auto deals damage to three enemies puts the target under slowdown effect and throws them in the air so a very good interruption effect as well if Karen is a melee type he is definitely very powerful, but unfortunately he is a tanker type. Karen becomes invincible for 5 seconds when her HP falls below 30%. Just fine. So, this one is a good boost to his attack. His passive, sorry, his leader skill is good as well. Sorry, I think it's her, not his. Yes, Karen is a girl. Yes, her leader skill is good as well. Overall, she is like a better version of Velro. However, she is not a mini type. She is a tanker type, but unfortunately, her first auto does not go after one normal attack. Her first auto goes after two normal attacks which actually makes him to be ranked low. If he is a melee type, then it's fine if his first auto goes after two normal attack. But he is a tank type, he is a tanker. He is a tanker but his first auto doesn't go after one normal attack, which actually makes her first auto to be less useful. Because by the time she uses her first auto, Zamor buff is already up. Tier B rank 15, Morox. His active is dealing damage to all enemies, make them fly in the air and puts them under slowdown effect. And his active skill goes first if you activate Morox active. First auto. 240% physical damage, ignore physical defense to all enemies in the front, stun them and decrease physical defense, so interruption and debuff. His first auto is good. Second auto, creates a shield that absorbs physical damage by 20% of Morok's max HP and increase the attack speed, so his second skill is giving good buff to the ally as well. Avenger 50% physical damage with 20% chance whenever Morox attack and inflict additional damage by 7% of Morox max HP so he actually had some damage as well Bonus to his stat His leader skill is not really that good His leader skill is not really that good, but if combined with the transcended passive, yeah, when combined with the transcended passive, so yeah, the ability of tanker is greatly enhanced. However, it is just that what's the point of a tanker surviving if your allies in the back lines are all dead? However, overall, Morox is a good hero because he has a lot of interruption, he support his party, and he's dealing some damage through his passive.
Tier B, rank 14, Lin, Full Moon Goddess Lin. Shoots 3 enemies with 3 hits and dealing high damage. So multiple hit active to 3 enemies. First auto, very high damage to the enemy tanker and it will inflict destroy armor and end this effect which actually could kill the tanker pretty fast if you are lucky to land the hit. Meteor shower, 240% damage with 3 hits and install bomb that explode with 30% chance. So multiple hit second auto to all enemies. Vampire effect, 30% vampire effect if her HP falls below 70%, bonus to her, and increase critical damage by 40%, a damage bonus to her as well. Her leader is not really that good, still useful but comparing to other leader skill that we have at the back line, this leader skill actually doesn't compete really well. So overall, Lin, Lin's ranking actually got boosted up because of the Transcendence passive. Fortunately, she has skills that is dealing damage in multiple hits and area, especially her active and second auto. And her first auto is actually killing the tanker very fast. So in the arena, she actually have a better use compared to other heroes ranked below her. Tier B rank 13, Marcus, Fallen Saint Marcus. He's active, 30% max HP healing to all ally and grants vampire effect. His first auto, bloody curse and recovery amount decrease debuff, just fine. And yes, his main feature or his main highlight of all of his skills is actually the second auto, remove 3 beneficial effects on all enemies, inflict 160% magic damage and put them under petrifying curse for 3 seconds with 75% chance. So this skill is actually an upgraded version of just their petrifying skill. I won't say upgraded, just that something a little bit different. Just there is like 3 enemies but 100% chance. Marcus is all enemies but 75% chance. But of course Marcus does more than just there because Marcus removes the beneficial effect as well. So yes, his second auto is actually powerful. Just that. It takes time to activate that. His first passive, he needs to take 20% of his max HP as damage, then he will decrease the skill cooldown time of all allies by one turn. However, there is a cooldown of three normal attacks. So it's just fine. Marcus acquired energy increased by 20%. Bonus to his energy gain. Just fine. And his leader skill is actually not relevant for the PvP. Overall, Marcus is just like a debuffer and a healer. He, in terms of healing ability, his healing ability is great, but it is an active. So you have to activate his active to heal. However, his second auto goes first whenever you activate his skill. So when he activates his second auto, he actually gives threat to the enemy. Yes, his second auto is dangerous. Tier B, rank 12, Justia, Justice Guardian, Justia. Her active is dealing damage to all enemies, disturb the HP recovery. Yes, the recovery block, and she will recover her HP by 30% of the damage dealt to all enemies.
Her first auto is what makes her deadly and powerful. She inflicts magic damage to 3 enemies and puts them under petrifying curse for 5 seconds with 100% chance. So first auto with petrifying curse which is at the beginning or at the very early stage of the battle. So this is, this is what makes her powerful. Second auto is alright. 260% magic damage to all enemies and silence them. Her passive is giving her damage boost and her second passive is also giving her more damage boost. So actually she, ha she has the damage and she has the debuff that is giving threat to the enemy. Tier B rank 11, Xenon, the heartbroken Xenon. Xenon is a very cool character, just that he is a little too short. His active Thunderstorm, 300% magic damage with 4 hits, and 8% of your max HP as bonus damage, stun them and decrease the attack speed with 25% chance for every hit. Wow, so many debuff in one skill and so many damage in one skill. Of course he is powerful. First auto, throws bomb to enemy with highest attack power, gathers nearby enemy, something like a cluster effect, inflict 180% magic damage and puts them under slowdown effect. Wow, so many effects as well. And he starts his first auto after one normal attack, which means that his first auto is actually going off very fast. He can interrupt the enemy very fast. Second auto, 270% magic damage, spread up to 5 enemies and weaken them with 75% chance. So weakening effect is like decrease the acquired energy by 100%. Very good debuff. He's passive, so this is what makes him special. He will stun the enemy for 0.5 seconds when he attack with critical hit, any of his skill. So he is like an interruption machine. Interrupt the boy. And his second passive is very good as well because his second passive fits very well into current meta. Increase his accuracy by 35%. So with this passive, we can actually focus on building critical. His leader skill, critical rate for allies on the back line by 15%. This leader skill is actually good but it is just that currently there are better leader skill for the backline so most likely we won't be using this leader skill tier a rank 10 serena smiling tyrant serena 280% physical damage to all enemies and cluster them and stun them for 2 seconds. Very good active. 270% physical damage to all enemies. And this first auto actually does 3 hits to all enemies. Very good for the current meta because of a transcendent passive. I mean for the first auto. Second auto usually hits the target at the back line and all the enemies nearby the back line and interrupt them by flying them in the air. Bonus damage to her and she will attack faster with her second passive. Her leader skill is not really good because it is too situational. So overall Serena is good and powerful in the current meta because of the transcendence and she is one of the melee hero that can have multiple hits and hitting all enemies 
especially her first auto skill. Her active skill is an instant inter interruption skill when you use her skill because her active will go first in her activation sequence. Tier A rank 9, Glenn. His active skill is doing massive amount of damage because he will take 6% of his max HP as a bonus damage and stuns everyone for 2 seconds. First auto, dealing multiple critical hits to nearby enemy in the front and bleed with 30% chance. Second auto, deals damage to all enemies but only one hit and he will become invincible to physical damage. His passive is giving him attack boost as he loses HP. And his second passive is boosting up his attack power based on his max HP. So his Glenn is having a massive amount of attack or damage. And he has skills, he has two skills that hit all enemies, but unfortunately it's not multiple hits. He has a multiple hit damaging skill which is a first auto but unfortunately it is not hitting all enemies. The first auto is just hitting the enemies in the front. So he, he is like half of some and half of some. Yeah, because in the current meta, heroes that can hit all enemies and multiple hits are always the best in dealing damage. His rank actually dropped because of the current meta doesn't support him re really well. His leader skill stuns the attacker that attacks the allies in the front line for 2 seconds with 15% chance. This is a very good leader skill as he can keep interrupt the enemy if the enemy is not very lucky. Tier A rank 8 Ramya, Rapper's Agent Ramya. Harmful effect shield to all allies and restore HP by 200% magic power. And the first auto blocks beneficial effects to all enemies with 75% chance. And she actually used her first auto after one normal attack, which means that her first auto skill goes off very fast. random enemies, 250% magic damage, increase skill cooldown time and disturb HP recovery with 50% chance. Her first passive is just fine, not really that good. And his second passive increase her magic power which actually not really relevant to her but it's just additional boost to her. Her leader skill is not really that good compared to others. So she is in top 10 rank and she is in tier A because of her first auto. The block beneficial effect debuff. And this first auto actually is very useful and it gives a lot of annoyance to us or to anyone that is facing her. Because Zammer sometimes may fail to buff his ally and Atmos sometimes may also fail to buff her allies which actually which actually defeats their purpose of being there for the, for the initial stage especially the initial stage and this actually makes their allies open to the damage by Kaor or any other attacker Tier A rank 7 goes to Zammer, Shining Justice Zammer. His active is dealing damage to enemies, all enemies, and he will become invincible for 5 seconds. His first auto, which is what makes him useful, he will give inability immunity buff to his allies and physical defense buff, which actually protects his ally 
from getting interrupted at the initial stage of the battle, which is very important and very crucial part of the arena battle. Second auto, 300% damage to all enemies and blinds them for 4 seconds with 50% chance. Well, it's like bonus skill to him because everything about Zemo is actually his first auto. Purifying Light, purify all allies with 15% chance whenever Zemo is attacked. Remove one weakening effect each and recover 4% per remove effect. More bonus passive to him and this passive is actually very good. He is supporting the party very well. Second passive, increase physical defense and magic defense by 20%, which makes him more tanky. His leader skill is not really that good. Tier A rank 6. So unfortunately, Divana doesn't go into the top 5 ranking. Yeah, because there are someone else taking her spot. Her active, which is very good, just that she is prone to interruption. However, as a support healer, sorry, however, as a support type, we can always give them Warrior Evasion Wound, which reduces the chance of getting interrupted. Her first auto, which is why, or which is one of the reasons why we always put Divana in the party, the attack power buff and the physical defense buff. If you are running Zammer, maybe physical defense buff is redundant, but the attack buff is also important to boost up the attack power of your attacker and to actually take down your enemy. However, for party that are running at most. Divana actually fits in pretty well because usually a team with with Atmos will require the physical defense buff. Second auto, huge amount of heals, and it is at the second auto, which means that after getting damage at the initial stage of the battle in the arena, she will recover back the HP of her allies. Her first auto and second auto just goes very well through the battle in the arena. Yeah, through the timing, she fits in very well in the, in the battle timing of the arena. Divana remove harmful effect one by one. If Divana is granted with a harmful effect, but the cooldown is 4 normal attack, so it's too long. Increase her magic defense by 30%. So her passive is actually not that impressive, but her active and her and her auto skills are actually very good. I wouldn't say it's very good, it's just that her buff is very useful. Her buff and healing skill, firstly, are very useful, and secondly, the timing and her activation of the first auto and second auto actually goes very well with the flow of battle in the arena. It's like at the beginning of the battle, she will buff her team with attack power, especially before your attacker launch their first auto. And after your allies are getting damage from a lot of first auto from your enemy, she will heal back her allies. So this is one of the reasons why Divana is very popular. And of course, her active is like invincible shield. Her leader skill is not very good. Tier A rank 5, Lizzy, Red Dragon Trainer Lizzy. Her active skill. 290% physical damage to all enemies, puts enemy under slowdown effect, 4 7 seconds with 75% chance, 1 hit to all enemies. Her first auto is 3 critical hits to 3 enemies with highest attack power. Her second auto is 4 hits to all enemies and burns them for 5 seconds with 95% chance while pushing them back. 
So I think there is a lot of confusion by reading this skill. So I will interpret it in a more clear way. Firstly, she hits all enemies. What they are trying to state here is she will be hitting all enemies in front of her, which basically means all enemies. And each of the hits have a 25% chance to burn the enemy for 5 seconds. And each of her 4 hits will push them back with 100% chance. The push is 100%. First passive, burn enemy for 15% chance with 5 second duration. Additional bonus to her and increase her attack speed of Lizzie. So, additional boost to her stat as well. Her leader skill is actually good, but just that the HP leader skill is better currently. So, Lizzie actually get a huge boost in her rank and tier because of the transcendence because in the transcendence era most important is dealing as much area damage and as many hits as possible so Lizzie actually have the active skill that is dealing damage to all enemies with one hit she is having first auto that deals damage to three enemies with three hits and having second auto that deals damage to all enemies with four hits so this actually put Lizzie into a huge damage boost if she is transcended because the transcended skill or the transcended passive skill is actually count per hit which means for example if I take Lizzie's second auto as the example if your Lizzie is transcended so she is dealing 4 hits to all enemies this means that she has 4 times the chance to activate her transcendence passive skill for each enemy. If the enemy is unlucky or it happens that you are very lucky, for example, let's say if you are hitting the Divana, if you happen to be lucky in your 4 hits, 2 of your hits gets the transcended passive activated. This means that Divana is actually is actually almost dead because she is like taking two hits, two transcendence strike level two hits. Tier A rank four, Atmos. I know a lot of you guys will be disappointed why Atmos is not in tier S. Her active definitely is a very powerful active without any question. Her active is very powerful. Her first auto is very powerful as well because she will shield the ally. Her second auto instant interruption and stuns the enemy for 2 seconds. Very good instant interruption. Her first passive, 15% chance whenever she is attacked, she will remove one harmful effect on all allies and grants the inability effect shield for 2 seconds. And second passive is boosting her defense up. Her leader, her leader skill is very powerful. Increase attack speed by 30% for the front line. So yeah, I mentioned everything about her is like very powerful but why do I put her in tier A? She is rank 4 so nothing wrong with her rank. She is still in top 5 ranking just that why is she still in tier A? The reason is because of this RNG. She is powerful because of this passive. Sometimes, during some critical situation, especially at the start of the battle, sometimes she doesn't activate her shield, her inability if immunity shield. And what happened? What happened if the Kaor used his active? 
I would say that I have a chance to get my team white, especially my attacker and my Kadus. What happened if the enemy is bringing Kaor and Ramya together? We always know that if both of your team is having the same build, same rune, I mean max out, max out rune, max out awakening, max out, max out everything and bringing the same team no matter how, your enemy will always start first because of the 10% energy amount gain for the defensive team. So they will always start attacking first which means that it is very important for you to shield up yourself first. Unfortunately, Atmos inability effect shield or harmful effect shield is at her active or at a 15% chance passive. So this might actually put her into a slight RNG disadvantage. Definitely Atmos is very powerful in all her skills, but Sometimes, if you guys have Atmos, if you guys use them in your arena offense and you guys have tried her many times, you guys may actually notice that or may actually think a little bit that sometimes you hope that this Atmos is actually a Zem. Because Zemmer is completely protecting your whole team at the start of the battle, especially against the inability effect immunity. But I'm not saying that Atmos is not good, it's just that between Atmos and Zammer, sometimes you may pick Zammer. Sometimes you may pick Atmos, but of course definitely I'm picking Atmos. But sometimes you are like just hoping that Zammer is there. Well, this is, this is all because of the RNG that always fail us. Of course, when I'm using her in the arena, what I mean is when I'm using her in Arena Offense, I always feel that her passive her passive always kicks in like rarely, very rarely. However, when I'm seeing my opponent's Atmos, the opponent's Atmos is always opening her passive, like non-stop. So it's like RNG. Everything about Atmos is great, just that RNG. RNG sometimes will make you disappointed because her inability effect buff, which is the buff that we are looking for, and the most important buff is at the active. Her first auto is actually creating a very powerful shield. Her first auto is actually creating a very powerful shield, but sometimes if there is a Ramya, the Ramya will just block it off, which is why Ramya is still in tier A because of preventing the first auto buff and will open, will open your whole allies being damaged by the opponent's Kaor or Lizzy or some other attacker. And second thing, second bad thing about the first auto is let's say your team is having a Divana. If Divana shield is up and sometimes we want to prevent everything, Divana shield is preventing everything, preventing interruption, preventing damage and preventing everything. It's like invincible shield. However, sometimes just right after Divana shield is up, Atmos will do something very, yeah, she will do something that will make you disappointed a little bit which is she'll activate her first auto right after Divana shield is up and her first auto will actually will actually replace Divana's shield and your whole team is actually prone to interruption well I am I am mentioning this because yeah I have the experience of getting in this situation yeah a very funny situation but overall Atmos is great I am using her from the time I got her until now
finally, top 3. Tier S rank 3 goes to Kao, Hatred Essence Kao. Kao active is instant in interruption active. Kao first auto, 3 hits to all enemies. And slowdown effect with 30% chance. Kao second auto, 3 hits to all enemies. And push them with 100% chance per hit. 20% chance to excessively bleed with basic attack. Not very good passive, right? And Kao HP increased by 20%. Bonus to his stat. So by looking at Kao's skill, it seems that he is not doing anything a lot. He is not doing a lot. He is just making the enemies fly up in the air. 3 hits and slow down effect with 30% chance. It's like not doing much, right? And 260% physical damage, 3 hits and push the enemy with 100% chance. It's like just jump up, push, and nothing. However, why is he in rank number 3 and tier S? Just because of his activation sequence. His skill activation sequence is very good. Let me see the leader skill first. Leader skill is also like useless leader skill. However, he is in tier S and rank number 3. Firstly, his skill activation sequence starts with the active first auto and second auto. Well, I would call it like a sandwich interruption skill. Sandwich. It's like his first, his active skill, which is the first skill to go first when you activate his skill, is interrupting the enemy, flying up. And, and then he will go with the first auto to deal damage. And lastly, he will go with another interruption skill, which is his second auto. And it's multiple hit. So whenever Kaur activates his skill, you need to wait until he finishes casting his skill or else you may have the chance to get interrupted. Well, one of the ways to actually stop Kao from fully casting his skill is actually to use Atmos to interrupt or to use Glen. However, you have to pray you are activating your Glen or Atmos at the correct timing or else they may get interrupted as well. And of course, you have to pray that they are not under the effect of inability immunity by the Atmos or Zama. If they are, then you have to change your mind to activate your Cardus to protect your team or to shield up your team. This is what makes activating Cardus a little bit risky because if you activate your Cardus too fast, he will get interrupted with the active of Kaor. If you activate your Cardus too slow, your Cardus will get interrupted by Kao's second auto. Moreover, since all of his skill is hitting all enemies and his first and second auto is hitting 3 hits to all enemies, his attack skill actually combines very well with the Transcendence skill, similar to Lizzie. which makes him having a very huge damage boost, a very huge overall damage boost. It's like, you guys can always try in the arena if you guys are facing Kaoru. Just ask, just try and see what happens if your enemy's Kaoru is activating first. Usually, I have tried before, the enemy's Kaoru can start activating his active skill even before the second auto skill is being launched by your allies or by the enemies. It's very fast. So when that happens, you will have a risk of some of your heroes getting annihilated. Especially the attackers, the fire attackers, Lizzie, Serena. Both Kaoru and Lizzie are actually similar. They are pretty same in terms of their attack power. 
However, what makes Kao better than Li Zi is because of his skill activation sequence. His skill activation sequence is like he has a sandwich type interruption skill. Tier S rank 2 Prospera, ancient goddess of luck Prospera. So I know some of you guys may not agree with me on why Prospera rank is actually higher than Atmos. Or higher than Lizzie. Her active skill, high damage, confirm critical, and will increase the skill cooldown time of enemies by 2 turns. First auto 3 enemies with high damage and anti them for 4 seconds, 100% chance. Second auto, Blessing of Hope, critical power up, increase critical rate by 30% and critical damage by 30% to all allies and increase attack speed. A very powerful support to your attackers. Her passive, she will become invincible if you deal 20% if she is if she is damaged with any damage that exceeds 20% of her max HP. Her second passive is 20% vampire effect. It's just alright. Her, her leader skill is one of the top leader skill. Increase HP of allies in the backline by 50%, one of the best leader skill. So why do I rate or do I rank Prospera number 2 or to be one of the top tier which is a tier S? The reason is because of the second auto and of course her attack skills even in the Transcendence era. Her Transcendence passive actually, actually doesn't go very well with her skills because she don't have skills that hit multiple hits. And her first auto is only hitting 3 enemies, not all enemies. And she have a skill, she has a skill that is not an attack skill, but a buff skill. So in a transcendence, she actually doesn't gain very much except her stats. But why do I rate her such? in such a way that she is higher than most other attackers. Let me tell you guys the reason. First reason and the main reason is because of a second auto. Second auto actually allows allow her to help her allies to actually boost up the damage of her allies. In this way you actually don't have to build your attackers to have critical rate or to have high critical rate. Maybe around 30% will do, 30% critical rate will do for your attackers and you can focus all those stats into other stats. Yeah, I mean you can focus all those critical rate stats into other stats. Like the attack, the HP, the accuracy and the evasion. So this support skill, this supporting skill, the second auto supporting skill actually does a lot. Maybe you guys may not see it. But, yeah, you guys can actually try to observe it. To be honest, I have actually tried a lot of arena battles without bringing Prospera. I bring Lizzie instead. My usual arena team is Atmos, Prospera, Kaor, Divana, and Kadus. I have tried remove Prospera and replace it with Lizzie. I have even tried remove Divana and replace it with Lizzie. Yes, I have tried a lot of different combination, but I found that Atmos, Kaor, Prospera, Kados, and Divana is the best combination. In my opinion, some of you guys may have different opinion, but in my opinion, those are my best combination. I have a 64 Lizzy, I have a 64 Kaor. I have a 62 Kados and 62 Divana. So I have like actually keep changing or rotating my team to see who does better 
and to my surprise, a team without Prospera actually have a lower chance of winning. And it's like I'm asking myself, and I also wanted to know why, what is the reason? And slowly and slowly, I realized that it's all because of this buff. It is all because of this, the blessing of hope. Don't underestimate this skill. This skill actually helps your team a lot. Because currently in the arena, everything is about nuking off your target. So you guys can always count. I have Divana, I have Atmos, and I have Prospera. So what is the amount of damage that my Kao is boosted? 30% attack power boost to Kao. Atmos will increase the damage of all her allies by 20%. So it's like 1.3 times 1.2 and times another 1.3 from the critical damage. So it's like around... Well, I don't have a calculator around. So I think it's like, yeah, it's like boosted up a lot. So that's how the Kao is able to nuke off the enemy. It's all because of the buff stacking up. And she actually gives the attack speed buff at the same time. This attack speed buff actually helps your allies to gain their cooldown very fast, 30% faster. And of course, being, being the buffer, being the very special buffer, she is able to deal damage as well. Her first, sorry, her active skill damage is actually very high. And sometimes it's annoying because of the cooldown. Yeah, if you guys face Prospera, you guys may understand what I'm trying to say. With the active skill, the cooldown by two turns. It's like sometimes your Kados is ready or your Divana is ready to heal up and then suddenly the Prospera activate the active. It's like you just left one turn and it's like we are keep spamming the skill so that they heal faster. But unfortunately the Prospera activate the skill and increase the cooldown by another two turns. So fail to heal. Her second auto during the start of the battle may, be, may not be so useful because of the Zammer or the Atmos or the Kardus will heal up, will remove the debuff or will prevent the debuff. But if the battle goes on and Prospera keeps using her first auto, the first auto can actually be dangerous because the damage is not low and there is an anti effect. Finally, tier S rank number 1, the top rank goes to Kardus, Spirit Master Kardus. I guess I don't need to explain why Kardus right, because everyone knows Kardus very well. So Kardus can do everything, Kardus can heal and it's a huge amount of heal and Kardus can create shield, heal and shield at the active and he can remove the buff and turn them into bomb and this skill will not miss so you don't have to build accuracy to him second auto is regeneration high amount of regeneration and remove harmful effect of your allies and after removing he will heal more his passive is healing more healing more as he attacks with basic attack and he is less susceptible to interruption as well because of second passive. His leader skill is one of the best leader skill below Prospera. 35% HP to backlines. Yeah, he is like he can do a lot of things all in one single hero. Which is why this time I rank him as the top rank. Number one. And being a supporter, he actually helps the team to gain energy faster through the transcendence.
So later at the end of the video, I will put up a summary or a list of all the heroes with their tier and their rank. Their rank is based on the order of how I put the heroes. So how do I rank them? I rank them actually based on my testing and my experience of using those heroes. For your information, I have all the Net5 heroes here. So I have actually tested all the Net5 heroes. Yeah, I mean all the Net5 summon hero and the combination hero. There are only two heroes that I don't have, which is the hero from the token of Union, Emily and Sally. I have only managed to summon Cory and yeah, I summon double Cory, two times Cory. So for the other net five, which are summon net five and the com and the net five through the hero combination, which is a Zammer and Serena, I have tested all of them. I have tested all of them in the arena and team arena. And so that is how I evaluate them by bringing them into the battle, into a real battle. So I guess that's all from me and thank you for watching, see ya.